Hey everybody, this is Puka from the Top Cut, and I'm back with round 8 of the Indiana Regionals. Once again, we have Dustin Zimmerman on the right, who is still undefeated after uh, that round 7 miracle, where he drew his double callless energy to win the game. And on the left, we have Joseph Horth, who is a player who's, uh, you know, 6-1 right now, which is very respectable. Both of these players will probably make it in to the top 32, but we got one more round, so might as well show a nice matchup between these two players who have been doing very well. So right off the bat we saw Joseph Mulligan, which will allow Dustin to draw an extra card, and we have a different matchup this time around. We have a Typhlosion Rashram deck for Joseph, and then Dustin still playing his Yan Mega Zorark Weavile deck. So. We're gonna get this one started soon. Looks like both players are ready to go. Both players start with two basics, so we're not gonna see the game end on the first turn. Um, now we have a different matchup. You know, last round we had the Yan Mega Magnazone deck versus Dustin's deck, and now we have a Typhlosion deck, which is a little different. Typhlosion, pretty straightforward deck. Revolves around getting out your Typhlosions, and then you just use Rush Ram to use Blue Flare over and over. And eventually you just overpower your opponent. And Dustin knows this, and he plays Zorark, which has foul play, which allows him to copy Blue Flare. And he can actually get into a prize race with the Typhlosion Rush Ram deck. And, you know, he can knock it out in one hit. And as long as Dustin is ahead, he can kind of just win the game based on that. So, we do see Joseph go first, which is a pretty big deal. You know, if, if Dustin were to go first, he could actually get... A turn to Zorark, Blue Flare, <laughs> and knock out Joseph's Rush Ram. And that would be a really bad spot. But now we're going to see Joseph play a Collector, and it'll allow him to kind of get going. And it looks like we have a Collector right off the bat for a Cyndaquil and two more Rush Rams. Which is kind of odd. Usually you see uh, some more Cyndaquils or, you know, a, a Vulpix or something like that. Maybe we have some Cyndaquils prized, but... Uh, no matter what, we do have a bunch of rush rams on the field. Not used to seeing three rush rams on the field, but that's what we got here. And, you know, if I'm Dustin, I'm not too worried about that. Rush ram is the thing I can deal with pretty easily. It's a heavy Zorark line. And, you know, as long as there's not a turn two blue flare. And there we go. There's the danger of benching those extra rush rams. We do have a, a spot where you can just catch her out a rush ram with no energy. And at this early stage... There's no way for Joseph to really do anything about it. And now Dustin's got to make a decision. Does he want to lunge and put himself in danger of um, an outrage knockout? And it looks like he decides to take the risk, benching a Bufalon as well. And he's just going to do 30 with lunge. Now, if Joseph were to get a uh, rare candy Typhlosion, then a fire in the discard pile, he'd be able to afterburn it onto the active rush ram. Then Outrage for 60, knocking out the Zerua. So using Lunge is a bit of a risk. Also, benching Bufflot is a bit of a risk for the same reason that benching all those Rush Rams was a risk. Because now, if Joseph wanted to buy time, he could play Catcher, bring out Bufflot, and it has a 2 retreat cost. And that gets kind of ugly, so we'll have to see how strong his hand was off of the Oak's new theory. I see a lot of red, which means a lot of fire energy. And that's going to mean it doesn't look like a very good hand. So Dustin escapes without losing his Zerua. That would have been a very big blow. Benches a third Zerua. So uh, <laughs> these guys aren't going anywhere. And we have a turn to Zorark. And that's going to mean a blue flare knockout on Rush Ram. And Joseph's going to be on the ropes right away. If he doesn't get a Typhlosion out this turn to blue flare, that's going to be an issue. He won't be able to knock out the Zorark. We have a Sage's Training here. Let's see what he gets. I don't see a Typhlosion in that top five, which is actually pretty alarming. Uh, we could see Dustin get another Blue Flare knockout, go ahead two prizes, and then Joseph's also going to be down two Rush Rams, which is not somewhere you want to be with that many Zoruas and Zorarks on the field. Uh, it's just not looking pretty. And we're going to see another Quilava come down, but there's no Typhlosion. All I can do is Outrage for 20. And I have to say, 
Uh, I'm not sure why he would just outrage like that. I'd rather see him uh, attach the fire to the bench rush ram. Because no matter what, that outrage probably isn't going to do much. Unless he plans on using flare destroy with typhlosion with a plus power. And uh, that's a lot of stuff to have. And then you put your typhlosion in danger. So, not sure why he decided to use outrage. Might as well just put a fire on the bench rush ram. Uh, that way, you have an energy saved up for the next one. If Dustin has a plus power and uses blue flare, then, well, hey, you're knocked out. And then you just lost two energy. But if he doesn't have the plus power and then uses blue flare anyway, you can just attach and use outrage for a knockout. You didn't need that 20 damage there. So, uh, I don't quite understand that, but, hey, maybe I'm missing something. Now we do see an Oak's new theory out of Dustin. Uh, so he's got that Zorark with a double colorless on active. He had another double colorless energy. So once he gets another Zorark, there's going to be a lot of blue flaring from Dustin's side. <laughs> Usually you see that from the Typhlosion player, but foul play from Zorark allows you to copy Reshram's attacks. And that's going to be an easy knockout. So now we're going to see, alright, there's another Zorark. Now this is just some trouble. Uh, if, we, if we see a plus power from Dustin... That's going to be pretty brutal. It's going to mean 130 damage knocking out this Rush Ram. And that's going to be a knockout. Joseph's going to be left with no energy in play. But Dustin is thinking about it, so... Um, I don't think he really has everything he needs. We'll see pretty soon. And... Uh, Alright, he's just going to outrage. Now, he doesn't want to just... Give uh, give Joseph a free outrage knockout on him, so he decides to make him blue flare, commit another energy there, and uh, just outrages for 40. And I like that. You know, you want to make him try to waste his energy, get in a spot where he can maybe run out of energy. Maybe he just can't get a Typhlosion into play. And if that's the case, Joseph's going to be way behind. So we see an Oak's new theory. We'll see if he gets a Typhlosion into play. And I don't think so, wow. You know, he had a lot of ways to get a Typhlosion into play, and I just don't see one here. I do see a revive, so he will he will be able to get Restoram back. As we can see his discard pile there. Um, so we can play a revive if he wants to, yep. Keeps spreading out his discard pile for us nicely. Gets another nice shiny white Restoram. And he will we'll take the first prize here. Evening the score at 5-5. Five to five. But without that Typhlosion in play, he's going to be in some trouble. Now, we'll see if Dustin can keep getting Zoroarks into play. That's going to be the big deal here. Um, you know, if he had a double callless here, he could uh, revenge for a knockout. There's an option. But I don't know. I mean, he's played two already. There's only two left in his deck. So he's going to have to rely on something besides attackers that use double callless energy. And right now we see a communication... After a collector, and he's gonna grab Weavile. He's gonna be able to claw snag Joseph's hand, maybe trying to get something um, out of his hand. Maybe he drew a Typhlosion off his prize and he wants to discard that. Whenever you can just steal a card from your opponent's hand, that's a really big deal. And also, just being able to see your opponent's hand is a big deal. If he doesn't have anything, you can be a lot more aggressive without any circum or without any ramifications. So. You know, just having that knowledge of what's in your opponent's hand is a very big deal. Now, Dustin has a pretty big decision to make here. There's two communications, Sage, Juniper, Catcher, and Cyndaquil. He can only pick one of those cards, and he decides to go for the Juniper. I would have gone for that, or uh, maybe the Cyndaquil, but he decides to go for the Juniper. And now, you know, we're, um, we're in a weird spot. We're going to see communication. Typhlosion's gonna come out, and then Joseph will have a Sage's training to use, and then, you know, he'll have to get a second Typhlosion and then an energy, both off of that Sage's training, so, we'll see what he does here, looks at his top five, there's the energy, and a Pokemon, so, yeah, it looks like it will happen. Uh, let's see what he decides to take, though, <laughs> uh, if he gets... The second Typhlosion, I saw a Pokemon and an energy there, so he could communication and uh, get that second Typhlosion, and then Blue Flare for a knockout. Alright, so we see communication for Reshiram, 
get a second Typhlosion, but it looks like he discarded the energy off of that Sage. So I don't know if he actually has one in his hand. If that were the case, then... Eh, he can't Blue Flare, and that's going to be a problem, because Dustin's going to get another free prize here. So he's going to decide to catch her out Bufalant, trying to buy some time for sure. Uh, maybe Dustin doesn't have a Switch or a Double Colorless. If that is the case... Then that's perfectly fine, he's bought himself a turn. Otherwise, he's put himself in quite a hole. Because <laughs> uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff that he can do to rebound from a three prize deficit. So, or it would be a two prize deficit, I apologize. But either way, if Reshram gets knocked out this turn, it's not a pretty spot. It's, uh, Zorark's gonna be knocking him out. He lost a couple Reshrams already. It's going to be really low on energy in play, and ugh, there's that double colorless. So at the very least, Dustin's going to be able to retreat and blue flare for a knockout. And we see him Juniper for a fresh hand of seven. I'm not sure if Dustin does play Switch, but that's usually a good idea when you're playing Bouffalant, because his two retreat cost is such a pain. Uh, I don't really see one in his hand, though, so we'll have to see exactly how he goes about it. Um... You know, at this point, he might want to target down Typhlosions, but the other option is just to take the knockout on this Reshiram with Blue Flare, and there we go. Foul play, copies Blue Flare, and another Reshiram goes down, so. We did see uh, Joseph has a Juniper in his hand, so at the very least, he'll be able to get a fresh new hand of 7, and I'm sure he'll get an energy off of that, so he'll get a Blue Flare off this turn, no problem. Okay. And let's see what happens next. We're going to see two afterburners onto this rush room, I would assume. And this is actually going to start to cause some problems. Dustin is ahead two prizes. Can't forget about that. But he's lost two double colorless energy. And then the third one goes in the discard pile. So the odds of him having the fourth one for Zorark, not very good. Uh, if, if he can get a knockout on this rush ram, though, that'll be a pretty big deal. Otherwise, I don't really see him doing a whole lot this turn. Maybe he can catch her out Typhlosion, attack it with Sonic Boom with the on Mega. But overall, uh, the tides have definitely turned back into Joseph's favor. We do see that Zora coming down. But unless Dustin gets that fourth double colorless energy, I don't like his odds. Um, that Restram's going to be running wild. <laughs> There's not a whole lot he can do. Maybe he can attach one energy this turn. And then Sonic Boom. And then the next turn, get off a of foul play. If he doesn't have a double colorless, I would say his best option is to catch her out one of the Typhlosions and just try to hit it with something. Otherwise, not sure what his options are. So, puts the rescue energy on Zorark. Catcher for Typhlosion. Okay. Now we'll have to see how many cards. Joseph has in his hand. If uh, Dustin can match it, then he certainly will do that. And Sonic Boom for 70. It'll set it up for a two-hit knockout. And that's exactly what Dustin needs to do here. And there we see another Zorark. So it's looking like Dustin has the cards he needs to match uh, Joseph's hand size. And in that case, he'll be able to Sonic Boom. And yep, there we go. Sonic Boom. They have even hand sizes. All right. So that's perfect for Dustin. Unless Joseph has a switch, he's going to have to burn two energy to retreat. And then if he does that, he won't be able to use blue flare this turn. And then Typhlosion could just be catchered up again and then he'll lose. So we do see a junk arm discarding two fire. And I saw a little guy dressed in a white robe in his hand, which would be black belt. So we're going to see... Catcher for Bouffalant, which is an interesting choice. Uh, he plays an energy retrieval then. Let's see, we're going to see um, okay, an attachment, afterburner. Now I have to question why he didn't go for the Zorark on the bench with the rescue energy. Uh, he did have the black belt in his hand. He certainly could have used a black belt. And then Flare Destroy to knock out that Zorark, also discarding the Rescue Energy and taking away the main threat to his Reshiram. Now, of course, the downside to that would be that Typhlosion would be knocked out, probably. 
but I don't see what this really accomplishes more than the other way. So, a um, little confused, but it's a tough spot either way. And yeah, it looks like Joseph's just going to decide to knock out Bufalon. And that's going to leave that Zoroark in play. And also Typhlosion's going to be knocked out. So this is kind of a worst case scenario for Joseph at this point. I do believe we are back tied on prizes, but Typhlosion's going to go down. Then the Rest Ram's going to get knocked out by, by uh, foul play on Zorark, I'm sure. And then I think Joseph's just going to run out of energy. That's all that's going to happen. And Dustin will take the last prize fairly easily. I don't really see this game finishing any other way. So at this point, I would definitely say Dustin has the advantage. Uh, he puts a Psychic on the other Zorark. And let's see. Played something. I'm not sure what. Um, taking a look through his deck. Alright, looks like a collector. So just gonna grab some basics if he can. Alright, so Sneasel. What else has he got in there? He can't have too much left. Probably Jirachi. And maybe uh, another Yanma or something like that. There can't be too much left in his deck, but this is probably to even the hand sizes out. Can't see it being for anything else. So he takes a Sneasel and a Jirachi. Okay. And when he can even the hand sizes, he can just Sonic Boom the active Typhlosion for a knockout. And he's going to be in a very strong position. So benches the Sneasel, getting ready for another Claw Snag with Weavile. We have a Sonic Boom knockout. And this is getting close. We're down to two prizes for Dustin, three for Joseph. And, you know, he's only got that one energy in play, though. He does have a black belt. That is true. But what can he do with it? There are two Zoroarks on the bench. Both have an energy on them. If he knocks out one with a catcher, the other one just comes up, knocks him out. Uh, but, you know, this is not out of reach. Typhlosion is actually quite a strong attacker. And, um... You know, we could see something like an Outrage knockout and then putting an energy on his Typhlosion as well. That would be the only way he could really keep up here. But it looks like he's going to go for a Blue Flare this turn, which is pretty much going to seal the game, I would think. He also discards the Black Belt, which is uh, kind of a strange choice. He's going to play Catcher. He knows he needs to take out one of these Zorarks. And he decides to take the one with the Rescue Energy. And he'll play a Juniper, I think. I think, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so he'll play a Juniper to draw seven. Draws a couple plus powers there. You know, another Cyndaquil comes down, but that could just be a catcher target. We'll have to see how that one plays out. But the way things look now, it's just going to be uh, a foul play from Dustin. It's going to be a blue flare knockout. Alright, so that first Zorark goes down, but the next one's going to come up. Blue Flare for the knockout. And Dustin's going to be down to one prize versus a Typhlosion. And a Cyndaquil with zero energy in play for Joseph. And he's just not going to be able to attack. Unless he gets a Rare Candy Typhlosion. And if Dustin gets a Weavile out and uses Claw Snag, I gotta say, that's probably not going to happen. We've also seen Joseph use a lot of Junk Arms so far. So his option to use Rare Candy, probably not too strong. And as we can see here, Joseph did decide to catch her out the Zorark with the Rescue Energy, which means uh, Dustin does have the Zorark in his hand. So this turn he can just catch her out the Cyndaquil if he has it. Alright, so there's a Junk Arm. He's gonna get rid of a Yanma. And let's see what else. Jirachi, okay. So probably going to catch her this turn. I would assume so. Yep, catch her for Cyndaquil. We'll see a Sonic Boom. And then even though Joseph will be able to tie the game next turn with a Blue Flare, all it's going to take is one attack from a Zorark to copy Blue Flare right back. And that's going to be the game. So it's looking pretty cut and dry at this point. All right, so we see another Junk Arm from Dustin. She's got to match hand sizes at this point. Uh, let's see. Actually, not sure what he's going for. Okay. So, he's going for a Claw Snag. And then there's an Oak's New Theory in his hand. So, 
Alright, now I understand. He can choose to discard one of Joseph's cards. Now, it's actually kind of tricky. Now, he wants to make sure Joseph has as few options as possible. And then once Clawstag brings him down to six cards, Dustin will have that Oak's New Theory. To copy the hand size. Sonic Boom Syndic will for a knockout. And that will be that. So, it's looking pretty strong for Dustin here. The only way he would lose is if he did not draw some ways. He used foul play with Zorak next turn. If he can, the game's pretty much over. But, um, otherwise, you know, it's going to be tough if he can't deny Joseph blue flares in back-to-back -back turns. That's going to be the way he can win. And I have to say, benching that Cyndaquil probably cost him here. With Pokemon Cutcher in the format, it's just tough. So we're going to see Oak's New Theory for six. That'll match the hand size. And we do see an energy in Dustin's hand, so it looks like he'll be able to blue flare next turn. Uh, he discarded the Sage's training out of Joseph's hand, meaning... Uh, there won't be a supporter in his hand. I don't think there was besides that one. Maybe a collector, so really limiting his options. There is a junk arm, so he'll be able to get a catcher, I would think. Drag out the Zorark, and that... Well, maybe not. It's going to have to be an energy retrieval. So, um, looks like he didn't have energy, which is going to be a big missed opportunity there. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. He has to use the junk arm for an energy retrieval, getting back to energy. He won't be able to catch her the Zorark, which really would have been his only hope in this game. Oh, never mind, there's a catcher there. <laughs> uh, so, wow, he's going to catch her off the Zorark and get a blue flare on it. And now it's going to be up to Dustin to get that, that last Zorark into play and finish off the game. That's... Okay, so we're actually going to see two plus powers... Uh, he's going to play his hand down as far as possible. And now uh, Dustin knows what he has to do. Alright, so there's Junk Arm, Collector, Cleffa. So if he gets... Alright, there's Communication. And he'll get that Zorark, and that's going to be it. So, he'll put another energy on the Zorark. Blue Flare for the knockout. And that'll be it. Dustin Zimmerman moves on to 8-0. Finishes Swiss undefeated. Joseph moves down to 6-2. But a good run from him. Both these players will make it into the top 32. Pretty close match. Once again, Dustin showing how strong his deck is. Just the speed of Yan Mega and Zorark can go toe to toe with these Rush Rams. Um, also, Weavile played a big role. Claw snagging important cards out of Joseph's hand. And eventually, it was just too much. He barely won the matchup. But here we are at 8 0. Dustin Zimmerman is on a roll. And I wonder if anybody can stop him at this point. So, thank you guys for watching. We'll have some more games from the Indiana Regionals coming up soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we're moving on to the top cut. So, see you guys there.